All right, so here we have a modified Atwood machine. And in this problem, we have a two masses, mass number one, which is hanging down off the table, and mass number two, which is on the table, and they are connected by a string. This table is frictionless, so we do, will not have a force due to friction here. Um, so the first thing you always wanna do with a physics problem is to draw a picture. So I have drawn the picture. I don't know where that came from. So I went ahead and drew the picture for you. And also I did step number two, which is to draw the free body diagrams. The free body diagrams are right here and right here. They're the um, boxes with the arrows on them. So this mass is free body diagram has tension pointing up. That's what the T stands for is tension. And it has the force due to gravity, which is pulling it down. So weight pulls it down, the string could maybe pull it up. Here we have mass two. Mass two has um, force in this direction and uh, due to gravity. And well, it's not falling down. It's not falling down, it's not floating. So it, it has a normal force from the table pushing back up on it because it's you know weighing down the table and the table's pushing back saying, no, you're not going anywhere. And that is called the normal force. Now this is frictionless, remember, so there is no force due to friction pulling of this back this way to counteract the movement. And we have the tension from the string here, and the string is what is providing the force for mass two to move. Now since M1 and M2 are connected, um, they will have the same acceleration, and they are connected by a string which has the same tension throughout. So we will use those in order to solve our problem. And first we will look at mass one more specifically. So here for mass one, we need to use the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration, That's Newton's second law. So they gave us that hint, so we better use it. So for mass one, we have the sum of the forces on mass one, and that would equal the mass one times its acceleration. And the sum of the forces would be the force due to gravity minus the tension. We subtract them because they are vectors and they're going in different directions. So the minus sign just says, hey, tension is opposite gravity. Now we know that the force due to gravity is just the mass times gravity, the mass of the first one times gravity. Therefore, the sum of the first one of the forces of the first one would be mass times gravity minus tension. Therefore, mass one times its acceleration equals the same thing, and we can solve for either T or A. So here I just solve for T. T equals M1G minus M1A. And now we'll look at mass two. For mass two, we have a sum of forces in the Y direction, like I said, this mass is not falling, it's not floating, so it's not going anywhere. There's no change in velocity, so the acceleration is zero. Therefore, the sum of the forces in the y direction is zero. But in the x direction, it's a whole nother story. Well, the x direction, the sum of the forces, oh, down here, the sum of the forces is from the tension. That's the only thing happening in that x direction. So we've got tension which is the sum of the forces in the x direction, since the y is zero, the forces for mass number two are only the forces in the x direction, which is only tension, which is mass two times its acceleration. So tension is mass two times its acceleration. Now I solve for mass one and mass two, both for tension, you could solve them both for acceleration, it's just a matter of preference. So for the entire system, we know that the tension is the same. So I'm going to use the tension from mass one and the tension from mass two, you know they are, they are different. They give us different pieces of information. So we don't know T, we don't know A. We have two equations, two unknowns. We have a system of equations and can solve for A. And that is what we get for A. And when you plug in numbers, it should be just under about 3.75 meters per second squared. And we can use that to solve for tension.